Okay, so I, I like Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> um, or I, I, Clint has strong opinions about it. But. Alrighty, thank you, Clint. Um, yeah, so this extension in Illustrator that we're developing, um, with it, I built this Montreal map of Art Deco building. It's, it's not all of Montreal, but it's the area around Nasus. Um, and I'm going to show you how I loaded all this data into our extension. Um, the, and if I can get my mouse to work. So here we go. So who's familiar with Illustrator? A lot of you, I am sure. Great. Who's made a map? <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, um, so any extension in Illustrator, if, if you aren't familiar with it, you just go to the Windows, you go to the extension, and you choose whichever extension you have installed and want to use. So I already have it open, the um, ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud one. Um, so I'm going to sign into my account and have Clint hold the mouse so it doesn't slide off the very steep podium. And by signing into my account, I'm going to get access to data in the Esri Cloud that I have added. It thinks I live in Long Beach. Um, and it's also going to give me access to data that anybody else has shared publicly or shared with me privately. And also Esri has some data on there as well, like uh, Living Atlas data. So there's lots of stuff you can um, add to your map to build a map. So in this is what we call the map words window. And what this is basically where you define your map's extent. So like Nick said, I am from Bellingham, Washington. So if I wanted to make a map of Bellingham, um, I would just draw what we call a map board um, <laughs> over Bellingham. This, and this is why I came up. Just to, to hold the mouse. All right. And uh, you can name it, give it a unique name, whatever you want. I would name it Bellingham and click OK. And there we are in Bellingham. And I could, you could manually adjust the, the, the map board if you wanted. You could enter exact pixel size or inch size, whatever, if you have a specific area you're putting a map in, which is pretty common. Um, and the downloaded Illustrator file will be named Bellingham. Um, I'm going to delete that, though, because, and show you another way you can add your map extent. You can add a web map. And I've made a, map, a web map called Nasus Montreal, which is the web map I used to build that Art Deco map. So here's the map extent, and I, I love that, that we've all so far um, sp uh, focused on where we're sitting right now. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and this is the same exact map extent of the web map. Um, so this is now I've defined my extent. Now I go to the compilation window, and the wireless is not catching up to my extent. So this is uh, interesting. <laughs> Click the eyeball. Yeah, just click that and see if it refreshes. OK. All right, there we go. Thanks, Clint. Um, so, so this is exactly how the web map looks like online. And so maybe you're like, that's not very pretty. But that's OK, because we're an illustrator, and that's the whole purpose of Illustrator, right? So um, let's check out the layers that exist in the web map. We have Montreal coffee shops, delivery trucks, major parks, monuments, emergency stations, some transportation and paths, another parks layer, and some neighborhoods. So um, now I, I want my points above my lines and my lines above my polygons. So I know if I expand this, I can see that it's symbolized as a polygon. So I can go ahead and drag this polygon layer down with the other parks layer. And if you watch that park in the middle, um, I'm on rail. If I, oops, actually. It. There you go. Okay, now we can see all the trails sitting on top of that. So even though I la I've re layered this here in this contents pane, what that means is when I, my Illustrator downloaded, downloaded layers will be in that order. But I haven't reordered the actual copy of it living online, the web map. So if somebody made this for me, it's really nice because I haven't messed up any of their work. All right, so that's. And now I'm going to toggle some visibility. I'm going to just leave on the coffee shops, the waterways, and the neighborhoods to show you some more things. So now that I've toggled off the visibility, those layers will come into Illustrator if I download, downloaded it like this. And they will be turned off, but they'll still exist there. So this is really truly a what you see is what you get. Um, all right. So I, this is a map about Art Deco building, so I'm going to add some more data. Like I said, you can go online, or go um, 
add layers from ArcGIS Online, but you can also add shape files. So here I have a zipped file of Art Deco buildings in Montreal, and a shout out to the Art Deco Society of Montreal. That's where I found this data. They, had a, a, they have a web map. If you go to artdecomontreal.com, you can click and find how to find these. It was a great resource. So this purple dots um, is kind of the default symbology that this decided to give it. So that's where all the Art Deco buildings are. I'm also going to add another shape file. I'm going to add building footprints, OpenStreetMap. And it's, a, it's really, there's a lot of buildings here, so it's going to take a little while. So while that's happening, I'm going to let you know you don't have to just add shape files. You can add te text files and CSV files. And so I made a CSV file of some of the events um, that are happening this week um, associated with uh, NASIS. And there's our buildings. I'll drag it down here. And I will turn it off for now so we can see. Um, so I'm going to add my CSV file now. NASIS2017locations.csv. And so that's going to be hard to see, but there's these bright green points and that's the default symbology that that decided to give it. Um, and there's one more place we need to add. You can add places by entering an address. Um, just, I'm going to add, since I don't know the address of this hotel, I'm just going to enter um, the name of the hotel. Sheraton. All right. There it is. It, it knew. Uh, there we are. René Levesque. And... Those. So it's this tiny blue point right here. That's where we're all sitting. All right. So that's how you can add some data. Now, I could download this now and you know, look up what the name of each of these buildings are and then decide to style them. Or I could do some of the data-driven styling right here in the extension so that it's already done automatically upon download. So I'm going to first start by... Um, going to doing some categorical symbology on the 2017 location. So I click the change symbols, and you can see it's saying, okay, symbol, symbolize it just by the location. Well, I'm going to do it by events. And you can see in this um, sort of preview, we have a fun run, some climbing gym. That's part of my NASIS experience. Might not be yours. Um, I'm going tomorrow if anybody wants to join me. Uh, field trips, Monday night, need up, Monday night meetups. Um, but I'm going to make it so you guys can see those a little better. Uh, so I'm going to make the size a lot bigger, make the outline white so it pops. Again, this is just so you guys can see it. All right, there we go. So those are some NASIS events happening. Um, I really should symbolize that yellow layer. So let's do that. Click OK. I'll turn this off, and we're going to do uh, core plot. So I click the uh, change styles. Now it's just doing it by location only. This doesn't have a lot of interesting data to symbolize, but I'm going to do by square area. So it gives you an automatic uh, choropleth color palette, um, but you can also click options and say, I want a different palette. It gives you all of these nice choices. I'm going to choose this neutral gray. And it's split it by natural breaks and uh, classes, uh, five classes. I'm going to switch it to two and do manual breaks. So it's letting me know the average is 5 million spatial units. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And um, there. Now everything that's darker gray is above average. Everything that's lighter gray is below average. And you can change the transparency. And whatever you set it will be downloaded in your Illustrator file. Make it a little bit more opaque. Click OK. And there we go. So let's say you are in the market to buy a coffee shop in Montreal, and you wanted to make a map of, of the estimated price of the coffee shops in this map's extent. You can do that in this extension. So I'm going to click again on change style, and now let it symbolize by price. And this is in thousands. So it's orange, um, but their size, more expensive coffee shops are larger. But I cannot afford anything above $300,000. So I'm going to make the largest circles be $300,000 and above, and then make these sort of meaningful categories to my budget. I'll say 150 and make this 100 and click OK. 
wait, you know what? I'm going to make these a different color as well. Why not super bright, bold, magenta? Like that. There you go. But you know what? This is not a map about coffee shops. This is a map about Art Deco buildings. So, oh, also, I, I need to show you that we can filter out data. Um, like I said, you're not, you're not, um, you can't afford anything above $300,000. So you can filter out all of the circles that are above $300,000. Um, this says display features in the layer that match the following expression, where the price is less than 300. There we go. So now all those circles are gone, and now I have a map that's more meaningful to me. Um, now I will delete this from the layer because, again, it's not a map about coffee shops or delivery trucks, so I'll remove that as well. Okay. What else? Oh, right, our NASIS locations and our Art Deco buildings. So I don't want to have to download this map and then look up online what, what buildings these are, so I'm going to add labels. So this is nice. I can... It already knows to choose the name. I could label it on some other field as well, but I'm going to keep it a name. And they're a little bold. So you don't have a lot of choices with um, typeface in here, but that's fine because all of those wonderful choices are available in Illustrator. So I click OK and go ahead and label the NASIS locations. I was already on name. I don't need them bold. Click OK. Turn everything on. And one last thing that I want to show you, oh, I'm going to turn these off so you can see. You see these black circles up here? Those are monuments in, in uh, the map's extent. You can use this extension. Who's, so for those of you who've used Illustrator, how many of you use the symbol libraries, swatches libraries? Um, yeah, brush libraries, they're great. So symbols libraries, you can use those for point symbols on a map. And um, here I have an Adobe Illustrator symbols library. You can see over here, it's hard to see, but we have a fire station, emergency station, a monument symbol, and a number background symbol. I'm gonna, when I download this, have all of my monument symbols automatically replaced be replaced by my monument symbol in the symbols library. So to do that, I point to the symbols library that I just showed you in the settings, go to libraries. It's already pointing there, but I would select it. All right. And I have to, so this extension knows which layer to be replacing. I just have to rename this so it matches identically. So there we go. And in the processes window, you have a couple options. You can uh, automatically replace uh, brushes, which are great for things like linear data, like roads. Custom swatches, so if you have a pattern fill for your uh, polygons. Um, I'm going to only do custom symbols. And then my map is ready to download and be um, beautified in Illustrator. But because we do have this very complex data set right here, it takes about three minutes to download, so I did it right before here. And I'm going to show you what the downloaded version looks like. So there, this is what it looks like before going to work on it. And here's the layer structure. And it's, I know it's hard to see, so I will tell you what's going on here. So because I categorized the NASA's 2017 locations, it comes with sub-layers, sub which is really nice. It organizes it on the fly. So all, if I had, you can imagine if I had 100 points on the fun run. Um, I don't have to you know, select all and make a new layer and put them in there. It's already done for me. Um, it does the same thing with my, my neighborhood's choropleth as well. And you can see those. It did automatically replace those if I isolate it. There's my monument symbols. Um, and for every symbol that you do replace, it always you know, builds this really nice symbols library that's associated with the um, Illustrator file that you downloaded. And then you can go into Photoshop and when you're all done and do some fun little hill shades and everything. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> so
So I think uh, even in the description of the presentation, we demoed this before it was released like two, two conferences ago. And uh, we're just about ready to release um, our second release, actually, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. And so really we wanted to highlight some of the new stuff because, um, again, things have changed, obviously. So some of the key things that, that we're going to introduce for this, for this next release, which will be our 1.1 release, we're pretty new, um, is if you're, a, if you're an ArcGIS user and you have an enterprise login account, and our first release you couldn't actually log in with your enterprise account, so we've added that. The, the really big one uh, probably here is uh, you don't need to have an ArcGIS online organization to actually use this application when we release it in the next couple weeks. All you really need is your email address now. So um, we made a decision back at Esri uh, six or seven months ago saying that uh, you know, we, we, can, we can give this out. You don't have to be a, an Esri customer to use this technology, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we're, you, you, you know, a lot of you guys probably perceive Esri to be this big kind of headless thing, then we're just brrr, moving along. Uh, no, there, I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes into things, and we're trying to do the right thing, and, you know, we're trying to be a, be a company that's responsible as well, but this is one of the things we, we got signed off on doing from Jack, uh, which was super cool, and we're, we're super stoked about it, so... Um, with that, um, we also added the ability to do labels, which Sarah showed. We can filter layers. The other big thing uh, that we're adding is um, we actually had it at the 1.0 release, um, which is you could access natural earth. So what we've done is we actually have a web map, kind of like what Sarah showed, that's hosted in ArcGIS Online. It's using natural earth. And you can consume it directly as a web map and then download that and you'll get the vectors and you can play with it. So it's just a really easy way to get some pretty good vector content uh, globally. The other big one uh, at 1.1 is here. We now have the ability through this application to access uh, large-scale global data provided by here through a similar type of web map as well. So that's, that's pretty huge. Um, you can add CSVs, text files. You can do places. Sarah showed all that. The other thing we added was this concept of what uh, we call continuous scaling, because we don't have a better name for it at this point. Um, and we didn't really show it here, but one of the things with this application in particular, we, we get a lot of users who aren't traditional cartographers, who don't do a lot of web mapping. This is, is fundamentally a web mapping application. It looks like a desktop application, but it is based on web mapping technology. Um, the constraints of LODs, those traditional Google, Bing, ArcGIS, you know, Mapbox scales where you jump, the, the, you know, doubles every time, that's really annoying, right? Especially when you want to fit a particular extent over a particular geography in a particular media size, whether that be, a, you know, a, a number of pixels or a number of page size. So we actually added the ability to go between those scales because uh, fundamentally behind the scenes, it, it is really just vector data. So that artifact of LODs is, is somewhat irrelevant in this, in this use case. So that's some of the stuff we added. Uh, like I said, if you're interested, uh, it'll be posted. You can get it from the Adobe add-ons page. It'll be the new version, which has the complimentary access. That'll be up there probably in a couple weeks and stuff. So um, I think we're good. Yeah. And if we'll take questions, if we've got quite time for questions. Yeah, cool. No, we can do, uh, so the question was uh, Web Mercator only. No, we have projections as well. So you can project as long as the content that you're bringing in is vector content. So if it's a cache map, we can't project. But if, if it's, for example, the natural earth or the here stuff, we can totally project that. Yeah. Any other question? What's the future? Uh, lots of lots of great, amazing things. Uh, I can't tell. No. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's really there is kind of a roadmap. There's there's a one of the things we've talked about at least internally, and some of the other guys from the from the ArcJS team is here, as well. Is um, understanding is if you're an ArcJS user um, and you're you know you're more of a desktop type of workflow thing, having some integration with Pro. So Pro, Pro uh, doesn't have an AI export, and if you, <laughs> if you were able to catch the backstory of this product, that's a part of the reason why Pro doesn't have an AI exporter. So there's talk of somehow using this technology in combination with Pro. So that's some of the things, and then we've got some other, other ideas as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the roadmap at this point. Any other questions? 
No? Come find us. I saw some people's hands, and I know there's not a lot of time. So come find us um, anytime and ask us.